Hello, let's look at some complex numbers exam two key skills. So what are they? If we look at the study design for area of study three, which is the algebra, it's basically just complex numbers, this area of study. The key skills I would say on exam two that are assessed a lot are geometric representation and location in the complex plane. So we'll have a look at an example of an extended response question. And there is always one extended response question on complex numbers. This one is from the 2019 NHT exam two. It's, it's quite a standard example of a complex numbers extended response. Um, and then we'll have a look at some more challenging multi-choice questions after this. So we'll just read through the question first. We have a line in the complex plane. We want to verify that the point 0, 0 lies in this line. Show the Cartesian equation of the line. Um, we've also got this one is a little bit different. The line L can also be expressed in this form. Find Z1. Then find the points of intersection of the line L with the graph um, length of Z is equal to 4 sketch the line L and the graph length of Z is equal to four. And then finally, um, find the area of a sector. All right, we'll work through step by step. Um, feel free to pause the video between each part and have a go yourself first. So to verify that the point zero, zero lies on L, we can just sub it in to the left and right hand side, probably separately. Um, the left hand side just has a length of two. The right hand side, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. It also has a length of two. So therefore uh, the point zero zero is on the line. Part B is to show that. So we want to start by replacing Z with X plus Y I, and then probably grouping the real terms and the imaginary terms on each side. Because again, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem um, to show that X plus two all squared plus Y squared is equal to X minus one all squared plus Y minus root three all squared. We're going to have square roots on both sides, so we don't need to worry about those. We can then expand out the brackets um, and all the x squareds and y squareds would all cancel out. Then what we're trying to get to is y equals negative root 3x and pretty almost there we can cancel out the 4s on both sides and then get y by itself, it'd be negative root 3x. All right, the next part is a little bit different. Um, for this one, we really want to have an understanding of the perpendicular bisector form. So even if we just go back to the original equation and rewrite that in the form Z minus negative two is equal to Z minus one plus root three I. Then we can see that the line L is the perpendicular bisector of the segment joining negative two zero and one root three. And for part C, we're interested in the perpendicular bisector of the point one zero and another mystery point Z one. So there's a few ways we can go about this and I'll show a few different ways. Um, but I think the easiest way probably is like a geometry approach. So if we just redraw this triangle a bit larger, that little uh, line segment, horizontal line segment of one, the line y equals negative root three x is gonna have an angle of 60 degrees from the positive x axis, which we can find using an inverse tan of negative root three. And of course the blue and the pink lines there are perpendicular. So to find z1, we're interested in this uh, line segment, which also has length one. We double the angle of 60 degrees to get 120. And then we can just use polar form. So it's going to be uh, cis 120 degrees, which will be negative a half minus square root three on two i. So I think that geometric is, approach is probably the most uh, direct. But another way we could do it is to consider the pink uh, line segment as a line with gradient one over square root three through the point one zero, because it's got to have a perpendicular gradient to uh, negative root three. So we find the equation is one over square root three bracket X minus one. Now we're interested in the point where the pink line and the blue line intersect. We can probably find that on the CAS calculator doing a solve is one on four negative root three on four. Now we have that point, that point is the midpoint um, of that perpendicular bisector. So we can work backwards from one zero through the midpoint to find the coordinates of Z1, negative a half, negative root three on two. Another way we could do it is uh, using algebra or on the CAS calculator. So if we define Z as say X plus Y I and define Z1 as A plus B I, then we can find an expression for the length of Z minus one um, being equal to the length of Z minus Z1. We probably want to solve that expression for Y 
And we know that that expression must be uh, equivalent to y equals negative square root 3x. So if we expand it out, we know that the gradient must be negative root 3 and the constant term must be 0. So we can set up now two equations to solve for a and b. And we know that um, this part must be 0 and the coefficient of x must be negative square root 3. If we solve that for a and b uh, on the calculator, we can also get the coordinates of z1. Part D is actually much more straightforward. We just want to find uh, the point of intersection with L, which was negative root 3x, and line length of z is equal to 4 is just a circle, x squared plus y squared is equal to 4 squared. We can solve that on the calculator and we'll get uh, the coordinates. We can either state them in coordinate form or um, in the form negative 2 plus 2 root 3i, 2 minus 2 root 3i. Then again, this is all very typical. We want to sketch this on an argand diagram. So make sure you use a ruler for your straight line um, and then circle, just do your best. Uh, we should also label if we have two graphs. So one is L, the other one is length of Z is equal to four. And part F is the area of the sector. So we just need to read the question carefully, make sure we get the right area. So we have the part of L where the real Z is greater than or equal to zero. Um, the graph of the circle, where again the real part is greater than or equal to zero, and the imaginary axis, where um, the imaginary part is greater than zero. So we're looking for this area here, so it's going to be a fraction of a circle. To find what fraction, we could use the total angle divided by 2 pi. Here, if we've drawn it accurately, we can just count the slices. So we've got like 5 pizza slices out of 12, so it's 5 twelfths of the circle. Okay, so that's quite a standard extended response question. It's likely that you'll have a lot of those things appearing on your exam too as well. Now let's look at a few more tricky multi-choice questions that come up. Um, so here, this one was from 2015 with a 47% success rate. I actually really like this question. So we've got complex numbers Z1 and Z2 in polar form. We've been given Z1 and the product Z1, Z2. We want to find which of these statements must be true. So if we just add onto our diagram the length r1 and the angle theta1, we don't really know anything about these. From the product z1, z2, we know that when we multiply complex numbers, we add the angles. So the angle theta2 is going to be about that size there. Um, but we don't exactly know is that less than theta is theta1, less than theta2, or are they equal? It's a bit hard to see from the diagram. So we couldn't say that either B or D would have to be true. Um, we think about the lengths of the complex numbers Z1 and Z2. Length of the product is actually less than the length of Z1. So it shouldn't be true that R2 is greater than 1. And as far as R1 being greater than 1, well, we can't really say. So if we look at option C now, what we do know, uh, so the length of the product is less than the length of Z1 that implies that the length of z2 has to be less than 1. And if we look at option C, well actually length of z1 is the same thing as r1, so we can cancel that out, divide through on both sides. Um, we get 1 over the length of z2 is greater than 1. That is equivalent to uh, the length of z2 being less than 1, so that is our correct answer. So yeah, I really like that question. The CAS is not much use. We really need to have a diagram and an understanding of how complex numbers work in polar form. Okay, this question was from 2019 exam two, only 34% success, and it's about rays. So we have two rays and we're interested in the point where they intersect. Yeah, what's up? So we're interested in these two rays and where they intersect. I think a diagram is probably a good idea for this question. So if we draw up, arg of z minus 2 being pi on 4. So we have this ray going from the point to 0 up to the right at an angle of pi on 4 from the x-axis. And the second one from the point 5 comma 1 or 5 plus i going at an angle of 5 pi over 6. So from the positive x-axis we're going to be going up to the left like that. We want to know where these uh, two rays intersect, and particularly the y value, which is b. So we can get them in Cartesian form. Um, the blue one will be y equals x minus 2. The red one is going to have a gradient of negative 1 on root 3, um, and it must go through the point 5 comma 1. 
But I mean, even looking at the diagram, we can see the y value is not going to be negative root 3. It's not going to be 0. Um, it has to be greater than 1. So we can pretty much rule out most of those options um, and see that it has to be D. Uh, or solving those Cartesian equations will get uh, the y value is root 3. On the TI Inspire, we also have the angle function. So it's under menu, uh, number, complex number, polar angle. If we've defined Z as X plus Y I, um, uh, here's a nice tip one of my students told me um, instead of going to this pi button every time to find the complex number i we can just use the keyboard i if we define it the first time so we define i is equal to the complex number i then we just type i and it saves us a few button presses all right so we define z as x plus y i then we want the angle of um, z minus 2 is equal to pi and 4. we get this strange expression with the sign of y in it because of the domain and the inverse tan um, what we want to do is solve when the first one is equal to the first ray is equal to the second ray and if we do that um, again, it gives us this strange expression, doesn't really help that much. But if we put a domain in um, x between 2 and 5, it actually does give it to us and we get the y value as root 3. Um, but even using the angle function on the TI Inspire there, we have to have some understanding of what the graph looks like in order to work out the domain. So a diagram always helps. All right, this is the last one we'll look at from the 2023 exam two, 34% success rate. So it's a more challenging question. Um, we're given the length of Z conjugate being four. So that also tells us the length of Z is four. So if we can draw up a diagram, um, the circle of radius four centered at the origin, Z must be somewhere on this circle. We also know the angle of Z cubed is negative pi. So negative pi is over here. Um, if that is the cube of Z, then Z itself must be one third of the way along. We also know that it's in the first quadrant, so it must be here somewhere. Actually, that gives us enough information to write Z explicitly as four cis pi over three. Once we have that, we can work out Z squared as 16 cis two pi over three. And then it's a matter of looking through each of our multi-choice options to see which one is equal to uh, which expression is correct. In this case, um, you know, Z squared is going to be up here somewhere in quadrant two, Z conjugate is down here. What we actually have is negative four times Z conjugate. But what makes it tricky is we really have to check each one of those options individually until we find which one is correct and hopefully show that all the others are wrong. So don't feel bad about skipping a question like that. Do the rest of the extended response um, and come back if you have time. All right, that's it for this one. We start from the point two zero and go on an oh, angle of pi on four. Well. Is it breakfast time for you? Yeah, but I'm not feeling very well, can I? Just watch a TV for a moment. You want to watch a bit of TV? All right, hang on.